Iridium, and I've got on back again, Jam and Dom. How are you doing, guys? Hey guys. Good. All right. good, good, good. So, as a collective, we finished off the groups or the bands, didn't we? All killer, no filler, uh, total frustration. We finished that off, um, but we said, well, we can't finish there. We've got to carry on. So we're thinking of a way we can do it. We're going to do other bands, but it might just be me and Dom or me and Jam. So, but as a group, we thought this can't end. It's too good to end, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. I'm, 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 I'm glad you're into it as well. It's good. It's brilliant. It's brilliant, mate. It gets your old brain cells ticking over. But so, Jam, I think said because this is his rules, isn't it? Remember. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, so, it, it's his world. We're just living in it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from not the game itself or the, the rules of the game, he always he said, well, why don't we just do the years? Like we, we're doing a year of albums and the same rules. So we're looking at you can't choose two songs off of an album. But, uh, and also you've got to match the track listing up. So if your track two is, it's got to be the track two of, whatever it was on the album. So it makes it very interesting. So yeah. you, obviously you've got a load of bands to choose from. Most of the time, one album. Remember, bands sometimes bought two albums out, though, in one year. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. And Even then, this year, yeah, it's a couple. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they the band, it was different back then. Music, they would just whack out an album, at least an album a year, every year, you know, because they used to make money out of them, didn't they? I can understand <laughs> now why they don't. So... So yeah, the same rules apply. And we said, well, let's try and start it as early as we can and work our way through. So the we agreed on, well, we probably might have got be able to go one more or two more years earlier, but we're not that Maybe, old, yeah. are we? We're quite young still. So yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we went for 1980. Great year. Absolutely fantastic year. Oh, because yeah. I mean, I mean when, when I did my best albums of the year. It took to get to this sort of stage where I've got more choice. I had some like in the early stages where it wasn't good for me in particular. It, it's not everyone, but I'm glad we started in 1980. I would have struggled any earlier, I think. Yeah. I think so. Oh, right. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So to get 10 songs, put it that way, or 10 albums most of the time, yeah. mm. it's not many times you get, you could find a killer song on a band or something you don't like in it. It's not often. So these are sort of bands you like reasonably well to get these songs, if you know what I mean. So 1980, I think Don went first last time. Yeah, I think so. So it, it can't be me because I'm too old and I get confused if I'm not last. So uh, Jam, go ahead, mate. What's your track one for 1980? Right. right. So I'm going with Van Halen from the Women and Children First album. And and the Cradle Will Rock. Um, it's the third album of Van, third Van Halen album, and um, this was number one on my Van Halen list, I believe. It's just a great rocking track from from a pretty good album, and it's just a it's just a great opener. And when yeah. I saw it was available, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to have this track. I mean, obviously, we spoke about it on the yeah, All Killer for Van Halen, so I won't say too much more about it. But it's a great track and uh, a great opening one for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great opening chat, and it's a real good opener in general on an album. Yeah, yeah I mean that I, that was my that was my number one on my in the, on the Van Halen uh, list that we did. So yeah, I can't agree more. Nice, nice choice. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, what you got, Dom? Well, uh, just to put even more pressure on myself, I'm trying. Unless I'm completely desperate in later years, I'm trying not to put any songs from bands that we've either covered in the past or me and you may cover. <laughs> oh, right. so I'm actually, oh, man. You are, I'm you actually going e I'm even farther. That. Well, there, there, there's a few that me and you have discussed that we might do in the future, mm -hmm. maybe five or something. So, I mean, I'm not making promises, but I am kind of putting that pressure on myself to try to keep those aside because nice. they'll, they'll have the day in the sun. Yeah, yeah, good. good. Anyway, okay. okay. So I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't done that. I couldn't do that, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> no. No. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's your list. Do what you want. But yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm going to put that extra, <laughs> that extra pressure on myself. Okay, so um, I can't get any better than this. When people have asked me in the past, obviously, I know it's impossible to pick your favorite song of all time, right? 
but this is the song that if I get a new stereo, this is the first one that puts on to, to, to crank it up and to hear. Um, it's, it, it, it's just, it, it's pretty much, I mean, if someone put a gun to my head and said, what's your favorite song of all time, this would be it. It is by Cheap Trick and it's called Stop This Game. And that's from their album, All Shook Up. Um, it's just the best opener I can think of. Um, I had seen them a million times and never saw them play this song. Every time I'd go, I'd go, okay, this is the time. This is the time they're going to do it. Never, never did it until 2011. I saw them at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles, and they did uh, the, whole, the whole Dream Police album with an orchestra, which was awesome. just uh, incredible. But then they did a whole bunch of songs after the album as well. And they did stop this game and it does have strings on the studio version. So right. to finally hear it live with the strings, I'm not ashamed to say I got a little, I got a little wet around the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> just it was a, like, it was just a dream come true. It was just. Just a quick one. They've got a new album out. What, uh, have you heard it yet? What's it like? I haven't heard it yet, but they have been on a good roll. Mm -hmm. They, you know, some of their nineties, 2000 stuff could get a bit shaky but their last like two or three albums have been spot on. So I'm hoping this one continues the trend. Excellent, Mike. Good choice. So there you go. Stop this game. If there's one song that I can recommend out of the entire mm. batch of any of these. <laughs> well, 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 there's one more coming up in, in future years that I can say is my co-favorite song of all time, but we'll take care of that then. So, so there you go. Stop this game. Great choice, mate. Right, okay, my number one. This might surprise you a little bit because it's probably not the heaviest band or track that would open up the All Killer. But I actually oh. love... What, are you trying to figure it out? <laughs> yeah, I am. So, I mean, some people say who are into rock and metal that this is a... What do they call it? Something that we didn't agree. There's no such thing. What's no such thing as a... Guilty pleasure. That's it. Sorry, I just went blank there. So it's not a guilty pleasure because these are these are one of my best bands that was have been, and that's Journey. Yep. Any way you want it, I knew. Any it way, be any way you want it from Departure. I knew it. I, I was going to say, <laughs> but I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> so I mean, there, man. I love Journey. It don't matter how sloppy they get either. I know this ain't a particularly sloppy song, obviously, but no. I don't care how. Oh God, look. We've already got the bald, the bald one behind me already. Yeah. Well, uh, she, she uh, fits right in with everybody else's bald on this. <laughs> yeah, four bald people. <laughs> four bald <laughs> people. <at the> same time. <laughs> so, yeah, I love Journey, man. I love everything they've done near enough. I, I must admit. Mm, I'm, no, I'm, that's an interesting statement. <laughs> yeah. Some of the, uh, I must admit, I got into Journey, maybe because of my age, I don't know, uh, that the second you sort of put them in two parts, didn't you? That first proggy, Very jazzy, bluesy, whatever the, the, what they were doing back then, not my sort of thing. And then, you know, this album showed signs of what they were going to become, obviously. And then Escape just blew it out of the water, exactly what I wanted from them. So yeah. any way you want it, brilliant song Depart from Departure. There you go. And that's a great opener as well. Just that oh. any way you want it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Okay, track two, guys. What right. Got? Um, obviously, going back to something we've done recently, um, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, and Children of the Sea. Oh, yeah. Track two. Um, it's ninth, with it. sorry, ninth Sabbath yeah. album, first one with Ronnie, of course. Um, didn't make my Sabbath list, unfortunately. Couldn't get it in. I think one of us picked it, I think, possibly. but I think I did. Uh, Me did. Yeah, it was Lee. Oh, yeah, it's epic as everybody knows, and it's just, yeah, an, an awesome Ronnie James Dio track. And I was, I was pleased I could fit it in at track number two, so it was good because I didn't get it on my list, so it's good to, good to add it now. So, Excellent. basically, that album you could have had for me, I could have had track one to a track eight, any song wouldn't have mattered. Yep, I agree. Super, all right, okay, Dom, what you got? Number two for me is uh, off of Permanent Waves by Rush. This is my favorite Rush track of all time called Free Will. Yeah, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a single necessarily, but it certainly was a huge radio hit. Um, 
where I lived. I mean, just heard it all the time. But yeah, that's always my favorite Rush song. Only time I ever seen Rush was on Permanent Waves Tour, which is like my second or third concert. Um, so good memories of that as well. But yeah, Free Will. Do, do you guys know that song at all, Free Will? I've heard uh, a li- I haven't. I've heard a little bit of Rush stuff, but not a lot. This must be yeah. great for you, man, because I'm so limited in my uh, taste that you can just... These years, man, you can just go for it, can't you? <laughs> you got a little bit of cheap trick now. You, well, you got a bit of prog now. I mean, man. I know, and uh, yeah, especially these earlier years are, are a bit more AOR yeah. um, than I was expecting. But those are just the standout, just yeah. classic, classic songs that I just couldn't leave off. So, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so Rush, Free Will. That's that, that's one I would recommend if you're not that familiar with their. I guess deeper catalog. Great, great tune. Very, very melodic. You know. Nice yeah. one, mate. Nice one. A lot of rush, and I know that song is quite good. I like it. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Okay. Well, one on my number two is probably a bit common, as in number two tracks on this whole list, probably, and that's the mighty ACDC "Shoot to Thrill" from Back in Black. There you oh, go. Nice. Way to rock it out on the second track. Absolutely. You know, yeah. another, another album in it. Where does it really matter what track you choose? (laughs) I agree. Yeah, there you go. All right, I won't even say anything more because we've done the ACDC show. It talks about (laughs) it. I think I think I actually showed that. that. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay, track three, guys. Go for it, Jeff. Track three, I'm going for Saxon, Mm -hmm. Wheels of Steel. And 747 Strangers in the Night. Oh man, I love that song. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> it's great. Saxon's second album, probably I think the first album has got a shocking album cover. The second album was a bit, uh, bit more produced better. And uh, uh yeah, it's a strange song because it sort of it starts off in the riff and then when it comes to the chorus, instead of rising up to the chorus, it actually gets softer, no. doesn't it? Yeah. It's just a strange yeah. bit of strange arrangement, really, but I just love this song and um you hear it all the time. It's probably Probably one of the ones they play all the time, but I don't get bored with it. It's oh, crazy. mate, it's like um, if I try and if I find a bit of Saxon on a jukebox, which I did, I ain't been in a pub for a while, obviously, but like I will put that or and the bands played on that. Yeah, either that, of them, I right. oh, just whack. That's, they're fucking brilliant, them songs, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I would say that those are probably my top two, and I would add uh, Princess of the Night. Oh yeah, which I love. <laughs> those are like my probably yeah. three facts and trilogy songs although they they do do well i'm not going to mention it because it'll, it'll come up in a, in a future year <laughs> <laughs> yeah brilliant okay we well, got dom your now, track free now saxon is another one that we were talking about two albums because mm. they had strong arm of the law this year as well in yes. 1980 so there were plenty of saxon songs to try to pick unfortunately none of them made it on my list but i do love saxon. okay another one i'm really really super passionate about um number three is by a band called the babies do you know the babies john no. Waite, who went on to bad english oh well, yeah i love bad english man They're okay superb. so this was yeah. his original band yeah it's got uh, jonathan kane from journey in the babies and it's also got um Bass player, or yeah, bass player who ended up in Heart in the late in the real big pop days. Anyway, they had five albums. Um, some of the best singles I've ever heard in my entire life, and this is one of them. This is called Midnight Rendezvous. Um, it's just it's got hand claps. It's got <laughs> I mean I just can't even uh, an amazing chorus. Just one of those just brilliant yeah. AOR tracks if you haven't that, heard it i think, I think that, get a, that bad english album is one of my favorite aor albums ever is it yeah, yeah well this is even lighter i would say it's probably i mean it's still a guitar oriented song but mm. um it's just pure power pop just nice. fantastic catchy as hell nice man good choice good choice okay my number three i said the mighty acdc already but the mighty white snake mm. Ready and willing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I love this era. That was of almost on my list until yeah. I decided to do the rule that I wasn't going to put any <laughs> bands. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, um, man, I just love that era of White Snake. It's my favorite era. You know, I know 1987 onwards. I should like that. I should like the 1987 onwards. You would era. think. Yeah. But for some reason, 
because I'm not into bluesy music hardly at all, but I just think yeah. Car- Coverdale's voice as well in that time from, you know, it was much better than when it, it from 87 onwards. I know he had problems with his voice, but his voice in that bluesy period from them albums, and that song is one of my favourites from White Snake. So, Ready and Willing, the title track. Marvellous. Yeah, I saw them... Um... God, I don't know. One of the many times I've seen them, but when when Doug Aldrich was still in the band, so it may have missed have been mm-hmm. 10, 12 years ago, something like that. They opened with uh, Burn, Deep Purple's Burn. And then somewhere later in the set, they did Red, Ready and Will. And I'm just like, whoa, because oh, yeah. I'd seen them a million times. I'd never seen them do either one of those songs. So that was Sweet really- Sweet satisfaction. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Absolutely <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, number four. <clears throat> number four. Well, going back to very recent history, Def Leppard. <laughs> on- <laughs> I was thinking, have you got the wrong year? <laughs> uh, yeah. track, it could be you, which is, if you remember, it's my, honor, it's the one yeah. I wanted off the album, my favourite track. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, good and, one. Uh, obviously, um, it's just a great song. It's got a really cool riff at the start, and it screams into it. It's just a rocking song, and it's it's just I say it's my favourite song. I, I do like Answer to the Master, but this is definitely my favourite song. It's quite short though, it could be used it only about two and a half minutes, but, but it's a great, great rocking. Some of the best songs are. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Yeah. Well, I like the Ramones, so you have to like short songs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Well, you Good got job. It. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting to it in, into a bit of Prague. You thought you thought Rush was bad. Um, this is Yes. Mm. And it's from their album Drama, which is a very controversial album. I always pick the weird ones. I know the song is called Into the Lens. Um, Drama was the first album that they did without John Anderson. Uh, Trevor Horn, the very famous, ended up being a very famous producer after this. And he was in a band called the Buggles Buggles, as well. Buggles, just say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he he fronted the band for this album, Um, and it's kind of a bridge between their '70s very prog proggy stuff, and then later when Owner of a Lonely Heart, kind of that new Mm -hmm. sound that they had. And Trevor Horn produced that as well, as well as you know all that really kind of crazy sound he introduced to the band. This is kind of a bridge between the two. as a kid, I never really paid attention to Yes just because it was too long, boring for a you know, or 12 year old. But um, I heard this when it came out and I was like, wow, this is really cool. This is really cool. It's got elements, I would say elements of like a new wavy mm. kind of thing, but still very rock and they're, they're playing their asses off as well. So yeah, Into the Lens from Yes, from Drama. Great, mate, great, excellent. Well, my number four, again, is probably a little bit obvious, Iron Maiden. Can you guess what it is? Phantom of the Opera. That's there number four, all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this really showed Maiden, didn't they? This is an outstanding track because it showed what they were going to be over the next few mm. albums, you know, what they would go on to do with Bruce Dickinson. You know, it's a bit... I, I love Paul Diano's voice in those first couple of albums. So do I, man. But yeah. it's not what they became you know it weren't for me the, the dickinson era is for yeah, me yeah and, and and i can complete i completely understand the decision to get rid of them because they never would have no. hit the heights that they did in popularity if they kept them around you know for, for sure it but it just it. but it just shows the show it, there was nothing it didn't sound out of place on this song and this song is a very epic sort of song so you know i don't know what the truth behind it in going and that but we got made and they became massive as we know so, yeah. like, like you said, they wouldn't have if, if it wasn't for Dickinson or that sort of singer coming into the band. But just a, an excellent song that doesn't get old whatsoever. Yeah. No. That's no. Really One of the standout tracks on that album, you know, about right. that. Okay. Track five. What we got? Um, okay. So, we're going to Ozzy Osbourne, debut album, Blizzard of Oz. And suicide solution. Mm. Yeah. Now, wine is fine, but whiskey's quicker. Yeah. <laughs> what a song! I mean, I, I first got into Aussie listening to the tribute album with uh, Randy Rhodes' tribute because it's 
that's the first, just the first album. Like, in those sort of days, you did get into live albums sometimes before you actually got into the mm. band. This picked up because obviously it's mostly the first two albums, I think. On um, yeah, so I listened to that first, um, and uh, yeah, all the songs on it are brilliant. And uh, Suicide Solution is one of the standout ones. Now, obviously, it got in a bit of trouble for controversy. Supposedly, someone killed themselves, but. It's just a load of bollocks, isn't it? it? The lyrics don't say anything like that. If you read it, I think it's more anti-suicide, isn't it? It's anti-drinking. It's funny for Ozzy to write anti-drinking, but it's almost saying, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, everyone was after the band. Judas Priest got oh. it in the year old, didn't they? Everyone was after everyone. Oh, so. All that, yeah. All that don't stuff. forget 666, the number of the beast. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. They also, they also courted that as well. I mean, it definitely helped their careers... Oh, their, their their names got on people's lips, you know what I mean. So, and of course, the kids. If your parents hate it, you're gonna love it. So, oh yeah, oh mate. <laughs> if you if you put a parent of parental advisory PMRC sticker on, you got to be off. Oh, yeah, I've got to fucking have that then. <laughs> Absolutely. <Coming up. laughs> Absolutely. Well, that that you know, what about the 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 rise of rap music? I mean. Yeah. Every single one of those had a sticker slapped on it. I'm sure that had a lot to do with the, with the contribution of, of rap yeah. becoming such a huge thing. For sure. I, okay. I digress. I don't have any rap on here, by the way. Oh, that's a shame. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your number five, though, mate. Okay, number five from one of my favorite albums of all time. This is Judas Priest with United from British Steel. Such an anthem. Oh, yeah. Such a... Uh, I just love it. It's a, it. I think it's always been my favorite song off that album of an album of all favorite songs, but uh, that one is just so special. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was in this, you know, when I was a kid and listened to this, I had no idea this was a single or that they had done it on top of the pops or whatever. I had no idea. It was just always a, a great one for me. But then, then with YouTube and growing up and all this kind of stuff, I do understand it was kind of a, you know, maybe went top 30 or something, but still you know, it's more than they are in. Yeah. did much in the singles area so i guess it's kind of a commercial one but yeah love that song so much good choice i remember that one when i was a kid for sure so okay my track five is from finn lizzie oh good killer on the loose ah, yeah. oh, what a heavy yep. sort of sounding song we great, talk great about song. we talk about controversial where well, this got in a lot of shit because of the yorkshire oh, river yeah. at the time was yeah. like Oh, yeah, hammering people was it around death. that time, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they got in a bit of shit. Well, not they, it was just, it might, have, it weren't banned or anything, but I think you know, it was just a bit controversial because of what was going on at the yeah. time. Post um, the boat, yeah, but a great like rhythm, like rhythm going through this song. That I just love it. I, I absolutely, I think they were a band as well, Finn Lizzie. Like many bands at that time, their singles were just amazing, you know. Yeah. But, and it's another band as well where I don't like all the tracks on an album. I can become a bit, but, uh, but some of them are just outstanding. Killer on the Loose being one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. Tracks. Spoiler alert that that that's in my honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great, it's a great song, man. Okay, moving on to track number six. What we got, mate? Six. Uh, this will be a quick one. Going because we've already touched on Iron Maiden's debut album. Um, I'm going for Strange World, oh, which I did pick on my list as well. It's my favourite track on the album at the moment. It's, it's moved around. It used to be Prowler, then it was Remember Tomorrow, and at the moment it's Strange World. So uh, <laughs> great job. Very atmospheric. Uh, very different from from the rest of the album. Um, just a great song. I would say we talked about it on the All Killer, so uh, we won't touch on it too much. But brilliant song. Excellent one, mate. Excellent song. Isn't it great that an album that's 40 years old and your favorite track still changes? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, how I mean that just shows what a what a great album it is. It does. If your favorite track changes every couple of years, you know. <laughs> We've probably spoke about this, but do you prefer it than Killers? Because I do. Now. Oh, definitely. Killers Killers doesn't got any hooks, does it really? I agree. There's a couple of songs, like Rathchild and uh, or Killers is a good, Killers is a very good song and Drift is quite good, but really, there's no, there's no hooks compared to the first album. Oh, I agree. Totally agree. But what do you end on? I would probably have to go to Killers. Mm. But it's a really it's a really tough call. It really is for me. <laughs> Killers Killers is the first made now I ever heard. So yeah, yeah. I was going back. Um 
to you know pick up the pieces but actually mm-hmm. i think the first one i ever heard was made in japan which is that five mm-hmm. five track ep with that great cover with eddie with the with the yeah. sword um but yeah so I, I do have great memories of of killers but yeah i mean both of them are just excellent can't really say no. okay so good choice okay. I like. absolutely Number six for me is from a band that, um, well, they're just so well known now that you don't even really think of their music, but this song I just could not leave off. This is Queen off of The Game and it's called Rocket Prime Jive. Uh, Open side two and it opens with Freddie kind of um, maybe the first 30 seconds or so. It's more of a ballady kind of thing but then it just fucking kicks in and then Roger takes over vocals. And I've always loved Roger Taylor's voice. Mm, I've always thought it's always very kind of passionate and um, yeah, I, I love it. So uh, this one is a, is a rocker, man. When, when that kicks in, it, it kicks in almost unexpectedly. It's kind of off the beat. Uh, so just, yeah, it's uh, it's really good. I, really so, like, uh, I, lo- yeah. I love Queen, they're early. I mean, I really didn't like them later on. To tell you the truth, I mean, I, I think that that greatest hits album that was probably their most popular album. I don't know the, the first one. I think you know up to that point, everything on that and the music yeah. that went with that, you know, the deeper cuts were great. And then yeah. from that from that point onwards, I don't know. I just think it gets get quite smutty. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. You, you know, it's funny that their career in the states was so weird. I mean, they were huge for about five years, maybe up until. 81 or something and then hot space came out which everybody hated but that was the last tour that they ever did in the state so we didn't get the works tour we didn't get kind of magic tour they just kind of dropped off the face of the earth as far as the u.s is concerned mm-hmm. um and then when i moved over here i noticed everyone fucking hated queen and i couldn't really understand why but now having lived here for a while i understand because it's just shoved down your throat 24 7 whether yeah. it's adversion but at uh advertisements or if it's you know uh just whatever you know it's just you don't have a choice to like queen or not yeah. um but i still have the memories of hearing them you know first oh, yeah. so there you go rocket prime drive great great rocker from them good one mate well my number six is from a band that i definitely don't like everything they did uh, they don't they're not around anymore um but there's some songs that I absolutely love. And this is my favorite song from them. And it's Motorhead, We Are The Road Crew. Mm-hmm. I, I, just love felt, I just love yeah. that song. I think it's fun. The lyrics are, you know what I mean? Another beer is what I need and all that. It's just absolutely superb. Obviously talking about the road crew. And it's just rocking, <laughs> a rocking song. And it, Motorhead ain't my go-to band whatsoever. And I said, like, I, I do like them a little bit. You know, the the lacks melodies, and I'm a really melodic person, I suppose. But I just right. love we are, that. I just love we are the road crew. It's just absolutely superb. It's just steaming, isn't it? It's excellent. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That that just it starts like a train and just goes yeah. <laughs> straight straight through. Yeah, but yeah. That's it. That's my number six. That is a surprise, Lee. Yeah, that's a surprise. <laughs> and there you go. No, okay. No, no, they no, no, just from that album. Sorry. <laughs> I just so did they? <laughs> oh no. right, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, right. track seven. Track seven. I'm going to one that Dom's touched on already. Um, Judas Priest, British Steel. Um, there might be some controversy on this. Not for me, but I mean, I'm going with UK release, and, and on the UK it's release mid- after mid- midnight is the track seven, which is what I picked. But I think the US track listing is different, so. Uh, you might not yeah, that, that open side too so that would have been track six on the u.s yeah but yeah i think we should go to the uk one anyway so nice. but living after midnight um six Jews priest album it's a bit more commercial i guess i mean it's definitely i mean i like something i like stained class i thought that was a good album and uh, some of the earlier ones and then a lot of the later ones as well but this isn't it's, i've heard these songs too much really it wasn't one of my favorite songs i probably wouldn't ever play it much anymore but it's still a good song it's still a good rocking song isn't it yeah i mean i don't you know even though i've heard it 500 million times especially in the state for fuck's sake you couldn't the rock radio i mean mm. just jumped on that that and breaking the law i mean forget about it but even when it comes on i'm so okay. Right. Fun, fun song, fun song. Yeah, sure. absolutely. 
Okay. What do you got then, Dom? Okay. Well, I got another little prog nugget for you. But again, this is more AOR, really. This is Genesis with Turn It On Again. Oh, okay. yeah. Which is just, I just love that song. And it's just on a weird time signature. Um, some sort of a, a drummer and musician out there could tell me what time signature it is. <laughs> but, um, that'll I'll be the only, the, the only hit single with this. It was like an extra step, you know. Um, love that song. Probably, probably the first Genesis song I really ever paid attention to as well. Um, I love that period of these bands where they started very proggy in the 70s and then melody kind of crept in mm. and there was a terrific bridge um, between keeping it a bit, you know, not quite so pop, like it's not Invisible Touch, you know, yeah. but it still has moments of, of that kind of musicianship, but they're bringing in melody and choruses and things like that. So. I, I love the periods for all those bands, but yeah, turn it on again. What a classic. Love it. What, what album's on? Is that Duke? Duke, yeah. I've done Duke, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, I like Genesis a lot. I, 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 wasn't, I wouldn't have probably picked it them. I didn't think it was perhaps in this remit, but that's that's fine. I mean, I, uh, I probably won't. Dom checked out with me before and said, what's in the remit? And I said, well, every, I, there was a big list of ones he said. There was only one that didn't make it, because I think we're talking um, rock, heavy yeah. rock and metal. I mean, I was even thinking about this. I mean, I was going to, I was going to talk about it at the end. You could even have a, a group that, because there's an occasional group that have bought out one heavy sort of rock song. You you know yeah. that if it's heavy rock or rock, you can have it. It doesn't even matter if it's fucking Michael Jackson, as long as it's a rock song. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I know what you mean. Have you heard um, Mike Oldfield um, from Crisis album? A shadow on the wall. That's a really heavy song. Mm. I mean, Mike Oldfield is nowhere near a <laughs> rock. He did tune yeah. me the bells, but he did a really heavy song in like, '82, I think it was. So. Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, all... I mean, I mean, later on in the years, you can all have pink. You know, what I mean, if you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. My no, track. You fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> My track seven. This is. This uh, has been mentioned, this album actually by Jam already. It was his track one. So it's Van Halen. It's Take Your Whiskey Home. Yeah, I thought, yeah. Off of Will Miniature. Yeah, 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 yeah. I absolutely yeah. love it. The way it glides, look at that riff, and then Roth doing his bit as usual. Absolutely love the song. That's my number seven. Harmless. Okay. Love it. Okay. And hello to you, kitty cat back there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> she <Hello>. loves it too. <laughs> <laughs> Likes Van Halen, obviously. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Track eight, guys. Nearly there. There yeah, we go. That um, track eight. Another album we've already talked about. ACDC, Back in Black. Once again, you could pick any track off this, probably. Um, and it first, obviously, with Ryan Johnson. It's the song I couldn't get on my list. And it's probably, it could be my favourite, it could be my second favourite with Touch Too Much, and it's Have a Drink On Me. Yeah, love it. Song. You got song. it on a list, buddy. You got it on a list. On a list, finally, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I think this is what I thought. I'm definitely having it on this time. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Great track. Yeah, unknown one. I mean, people don't perhaps know it as much. If they haven't really, if they've heard the singles off the album, they might not know it, but it's just a cracking song, isn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my... My other one off that album that isn't uh, super well known for me is Shake a Leg. That one just puts me under. I don't have it, obviously, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Love that as well. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Song. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number eight for me, we've already discussed the album Blizzard of Oz. I have Revelation Mother Earth. Yeah. Good song. Just a. Uh, I have to say, when I was younger, it wasn't my favorite off the album. I think because I didn't really pay that much attention to it because it starts off very kind of you know uh but boy does that kick in after a while jesus just completely epic it's funny you mentioned that tribute album because that tribute live album tribute to randy rhodes came out in the oh, late yeah. 80s I think. yeah that's weird so I remember it, that, yeah. It, it, was, it was quite yeah. a period after he had died i think it was after ultimate sin or something so um that's why i first really paid attention to revelation mother earth 
and just realized how heavy it was once it gets past the kind of um you know mother earth piece yeah. thing um but yeah great song yeah brilliant right okay well on the flip side of aussie i suppose i've got to go dio then so black <laughs> sabbath black sabbath the absolutely amazing epic lonely is the word mm. just one, yep. of the, one of the best songs dio's ever sung um just man he transports you doesn't he with his lyrics it's just you know lyrically just amazing just i don't just transport you back to when you was a kid just transports you to places and the mystical sort of lyrics he has and you don't Dragons really, and rainbows oh man you don't really understand them but they just sound brilliant <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah and but yeah lonely is the magic word, with a j yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. And um, obviously, Tony Iommi, really, you know, a really long couple of solos on this. Great, great guitar playing. Just a brilliant song. What a closer. Yeah. Um, so not the closer to my playlist, but the play <laughs> closer to Heaven and Hell, obviously. Got so, two more songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got two more songs, which ain't that easy in 1980. No. There's not no. many albums had 10 songs on. So we're up to track nine mm. and jams first. Right. This will be probably the first of many through the years. First mention of the mighty Ramones. Oh, uh, right. From the album End of the Century. Bit up, bit premature there. Um, and the song is called This Ain't Havana. Uh, this is their fifth album. It's actually produced by Phil Spector before he went around killing people or was it after he killed someone? And he killed his wife or something. But, mm, I think it's before. Before, yeah. <laughs> well, he did, it took ages to get done for it, didn't he? So I wasn't sure. He said, I can't remember. But, but but I think he pulled a gun on the band in the studio when they were making this record. Yeah. So anyway, I think the Ramones were trying to head for, from, obviously, this is the end of the punk era. They were heading, wanted to get more commercial, I think. And um, some of them have got a song like Baby, I Love You on there, which is like a 60s type vibe to it. But uh, anyway, this song, this ain't a band, is just a proper sort of rocking, not a punk song, but it's a proper rocking, fast song. Um, it's more like the old stuff from the early, early days, not, not particularly punky, but just a fast rocking song. I could have had, uh, there's, there's no bad Ramones songs really, as far as I'm concerned. They're, they're, you know, if they don't like them, there's another one coming along in a couple of minutes, so it doesn't really matter. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> right so take okay. that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, don't you get up there. What do you mean cats? Right, okay, right. So, watch out. I, I had a bit of tra trouble with my track nine. The band that I've got at track nine, I wanted to put uh, another slot. I wanted to put this band earlier on. Eh? Isn't it Dom next? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were just going off on some tangent. Eh? <laughs> don't so have, anyway. Don't have one beer at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> I... I think we should all get drunk for the next one. Yeah, yeah. Why just not? come on here, just sloshy. <laughs> the thing will be like three hours long and we'll just go off on some <laughs> fucking tangents about, you know. Anyway, uh, okay, it, number nine for me is an Australian band who are very popular there called the Angels. But in the States, they're called Angel City because they didn't want to be confused with the American band Angel. <laughs> yeah. who are the opposite of this they were all white you know yeah. anyway yeah. uh so angels or angel city from their album dark room this is called devil's gate um singers very similar to bon scott very similar to bon scott you know all those australian bands i don't know if it was just in the water or what because um you know Ro rose tattoo have the same mm -hmm. the same dna as well yeah. i don't think they're yeah. all just completely ripping off acdc i think it's just you know, they all played the clubs together and they all went through that, you know, same thing. So I don't know. But um, if you've never heard the Angels slash Angel City, get a get a best of or something. And Devil's Gate is just it, it closes this album and is just a straight up. I would compare it to maybe a whole lot of Rosie or something or nice. Let There Be Rock. Just one of those that just goes and goes till the end. And you just think your speaker's going to catch on fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, check them out. The Angels. Cool. Right, do I get my choice now? Is that all right now? All no, right we're now? just going to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I want, I love this band. Uh, this one, my favourite album from this band. In fact, I was a bit disappointed in this album. I still am. I think, I think it's a weak, compared from where it was in their discography. 
from a really strong album to an even stronger album after it. The Can't one be Scorpion. Middle. Yes, no. Scorpion, yes. <laughs> so good, good, good um, guess there. So I wanted another song off this, but because of the way the game is and the rules, I couldn't. But I do love this song and it's different. It's Animal Magnetism, the actual song, Animal Magnetism. So dark, heavy, like a simple sort of melody running, running through it, which I absolutely love. Um, very different, sort of doomy almost. Reminds me a little, they sort of did those back then. They, the China White one that came on the next album. Was yeah, that, absolutely. That sort of thing. But I, this is not my favourite song off the album. I would have loved Make It Real, to tell you the truth, because I absolutely love it. Oh, um, yeah, that's just one of the best songs of all time. But I couldn't because of just the way it worked out. But it's still a, an excellent song. A bit of a strange song, to tell you the truth. Yeah, but, but I liked when they got strange. Like you said, yeah. kind of white with all those echoey screams that he mm. does and stuff. They, th from then on, they never had songs like that on their albums again. No, no, exactly. This so is I like when they got a bit weird. Oh, without a doubt. This is probably a little bit influenced by their stuff before Love Drive, a little bit. Yes, the you Uli know, Roth years, yeah. For mm -hmm. sure, for sure. But yeah, Animal Magnetism is my number nine. We're on to the last track, guys. Track 10. And right. Um, um, won't have much to talk about on this one because it was on my Kiss list anyway. And it was from the Unmasked album, and it's Torpedo Girl again. It gets oh, right yes. on. So good, you had to have it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Jam, you are you, you are one in a million, man. You are just. <laughs> <laughs> have you listened to that song, Lee? Have you have you listened to it? No, but I really wanted to. After now, the you're going to have to. Oh well, now he, now Jam's chosen it twice. That's it. I've got to listen to it. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. I ain't fucking listening to that. <laughs> oh man, that's great. God jam. What a what a choice. Good. Thank you very much. Good closer, mate. Right, what you got, Dom? I don't think they ever played that live, but maybe if I maybe if I talk to them, I'll do it just for you. Maybe if they um, watch this, I'll do it. Hmm. Okay, so number 10, it's funny because my number one song, Cheap Trick, and this song are both produced by George Martin, who is the famous Beatles producer, but he definitely did some rock in 1980 because he did both of these albums. This is UFO, mm. and the song is called Any Day, and it's from No Place to Run. This is their first album after Shanker left, and Paul Chapman came on, but I don't think they really missed a step. I mean, they may... The only thing is that, you know, they may have missed really extended solos and things like that because he is a great guitar player. If anything, they got a bit more compact in their songwriting. But this one, um, especially being a closer, is a bit on the epic side, you know. It's got that kind of opens with us lighter, you know, feel with him kind of crooning, but then it just fucking kicks in and it's nobody's business. It's it's a very kind of Lee Spencer song. And, and, <laughs> In that, in, you know, where, where it's like a, it's like a steady mid-tempo groove, you know, and um, yeah, it, it, it's really a standout from that album. So there you go. I haven't heard any mention of UFO on this channel, so you must not be a fan. Um, I, I did like some of their songs, but I've, I don't know. I liked their more, I suppose you say commercial side they had a bit later on, didn't they? Um I'm actually well, this is probably the this is probably the start of that period, to be honest. Yeah, I'm actually Facebook friends with uh, Rob Rob DeLuca. The, he's the bass guitarist. Well, he was because Pete Wade died, didn't he? Yeah. So, um, but no, yeah. So he actually messaged me about something early on. So it's a bit of a coincidence. She said that. So, um, but oh, no, wow. okay. Yeah, I'm. I don't know with UFO. I, I mean, I, I like their some of the hits that I heard. You know. Mm -hmm. I couldn't help but you can't help but like Doctor Doctor before you see Maiden for a start. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, if, if, if yeah, <laughs> everyone knows that song back to front because we've all been to plenty of Maiden shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when you know it's that's when you know it's going to kick off, isn't it? So, right. My, well, my number ten. Very recently, we've spoken about it, so I'm not even going to go into what the song is. Def Leppard, Answer to the Master. There you go. That's that's right. That closes my ten songs off. Cool. Wow, all right. 
So, um, we have got some honourable mentions. I don't think we're going to go into one by the sounds of it because we were talking to you guys before we did the show as much. Uh, I haven't got hardly any. I'm just going to name... Uh, I'll do mine first, actually, because the only thing I couldn't squeeze on it, which I would have liked to have, would be a Saxon song at some mm-hmm. point. So I didn't manage to get it on off because... I was thinking, could it be my number nine? Then I weren't too keen on the number nines of the Saxon albums. And I was like, and then uh, St. Hill's come at number one. I was like, oh, I'll just have to, it has to be an honorable mention. So no, no. basically, yeah. Saxon are my honorable mention. Here you go. Cool. What you got? Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, I can. Yeah. Um, I've got a few. I've, I don't want to mention it. I've, I'm only going to mention one song off an album I've already picked, and I've just got another couple. So I've only got about a few here. So Rush, I would have had. From uh, Spirit of Radio for Permanent Waves at number one. I know yep. it's a lot, played a lot, but it's a great song. Um, I do like it still. Don't get bored of that one either. Or White Snake, um, Fall for Your Loving from Reading Willing. Oh, yeah. The original uh, version. Yeah. Um, I Made Remember Tomorrow at Two, if I didn't have the other one. Track three, Danny Says from the Ramones from End yeah. of Century. And Foo Fighters do a good cover of that as well. People might have heard that version. Number four, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. Number six, Mr. Crowley from Blizzard. And then number 10, I would have had ACDC, Rock and Roll, and Noise Pollution, which I think some people yeah. have on our list, didn't we? So a few of us. So. That's it, really. I've got to say, you mentioned White Snake there and Fall For Your Loving. I've got to say that every song that they did originally was, for me, was miles better than what they did later. Fall For Your Loving, Here I Go Again, all them were just... Well, I mean, yeah, if, if, if you heard them first, of course, the newfangled versions are going to sound shite. Yeah. 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 You know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. yeah. What you got then, Don? Okay. Well, I uh, I actually found, well, not a whole lot. And I'm not, they're not, I'm not going to put them in track list or anything, but uh, just a few tracks. I had Killer on the Loose, as we said, playing Lizzie. I have Tigers of Pantang, Susie Smiled, which is a track I really like off of Wildcat. Um, I also have Strangers in the Night, 747. Mm-hmm. Saxon. Uh, Motorhead, my choice from that album was Chase is Better Than the Catch. Love that track. Uh, MSG, Michael Shanker's first album, mm, yeah. Armed and Ready. Yeah, a lot of Such that song. Yeah. Killer song, yeah. Or I could have had Cry for the Nations as well. Both mm. of those are great. Uh, Billy Squire, one of my very favorites from the early 80s. Uh, this was before his super big hit, but he had an album called The uh, Tale of the Tape and this song called The Big Beat. It's actually ended up being one of the most popular rap samples. I think there's like mm-hmm. on like 10 different rap albums, just, just the just the beat of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, great song, Big Beat by Billy Squire, if you don't know. Uh, Alice Cooper off of Flush the Fashion. Clones was kind of his uh, dipping his toe into like a more new wave water, but um, just a classic. Never get tired of that. I and then finally, uh, from Pete Townsend's Solo album, Empty Glass, which is just a great album. Uh, Rough Boys, the opening track is just a stormer. Um, I've always loved that song. I know it's kind of borderline for this channel, but you know he still plays a great guitar. So. <laughs> I think I think those borderline ones that we're going to talk about all the way through these years are going to be the fun ones. We can challenge each other, can't we? That that ain't fucking right. You can't have that one. That's all, that's the fun of it, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But you know, I mean, it is. Uh, I, I did want to want to send you that list the other night because, you know, I don't want to, you know, it, it is your channel after all, and I'm not going to, you know, come in with, but I, I will have, uh, I will have some where I kind of struggle. Uh, what one I struggled with on this list is that is the Pretenders first album, because there's a lot of rockers on there really. Um, but I just didn't think that. Yeah. You're sort really, of thinking, you know, Pretenders, Blondie, them sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard, but especially it? that, especially that first Pretenders album. I mean, they became yeah. a lot more hit conscious later. Mm. But that one's really raw, um, mm. and just got a couple of really straight ahead, mm. fast rockers. Um, but anyway, I decided against it. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be one of them ones where you don't. Sometimes you'll put one in you don't really know about, but that's all fun, all part of the fun. Of it. Yeah, there you go. Good. All right. Good. All right. Cool. So we're obviously going to go in order. We're not going to do a weird thing like we are with the live streams and go backwards. We're going to go. We're going to go normal. We're going to go 1981 next at some point. 
So you start, right. start working on your list, boys. I'm sure you probably already have, actually. Yeah, um, already done. I, done it. I, I, so you've done it, Dom, uh, Jam? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I've had a quick look through the albums released that year, but I haven't even gotten close to starting a list. So. No, I think it's done. It just needs uh, just checking, obviously, and all that. But yeah, pretty done, I think. Nice. So we're we'll probably we'll going. We're, I'll let you know when we're going to uh, team up for that one. All right, guys. Well, Lee's got the advantage, of course, on all of these because he's already done these on his channel. So he already has his. I said that offline. I didn't say that. They weren't meant to be on film. They weren't, they weren't meant to be rolling. <laughs> Well, anybody that's watched your channel knows that you've gone through every single year already. <laughs> but but through, I must admit, though, through those years, I'm, what I am going to have to check out, because obviously people suggest stuff and say, well, what about this? What about that? So no, right, I, yeah. I, I, might, I, I did actually have some new songs that I have never heard before that I did on the channel and reacted to. And cool. Liked. So that's, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, and, and also, of course, the the stupid rules. I mean, the, the great rule that John came up with. Um, actually, uh, you know, it, it's going to make any other list just inconsequential because you're still going to have to fucking okay. wrench those songs into this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Listen, you, I've, I've invited you on before, Dom. The only one you really wanted to come on to was this fucking frustrating thing. So you can't, <laughs> you can't give it all that shit. I yeah. love it. You love it, I wouldn't have come back if I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> As we said before, this is the ultimate, like, Sophie's choice, give your baby to the Nazis, yeah. you know? It's just like, yeah. I'll tell you How who's going to enjoy this before we go. Your fucking mates on Facebook are going to love this one. Of all your choices. Yeah, you think so? Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I guess there's a bit more variety because, you, I mean, if you're just doing bands, man, Jesus, not, not every one of these bands I picked, I would even be able to do a... No. No. Uh, all, all killer top 10 but these yeah. are some of the most classic songs in my life so I'm quite happy with them nice yeah. well boys thanks again obviously 1981 next get working well, all, right. all right man good seeing see you, you guys time. cheers guys thanks, thanks.